didn't find any treasures. Did you? G'day my lovelies and welcome back to my channel. I'm Kathy, and today I'm going to tell you how the Loving What You Own challenge went for me anyway. I'm actually really glad I did this challenge. Overall, it has been very successful, I guess, in that I've read books I've had for such a long time because I put a limit of at least 10 years on the books I was going to read. The only downside was that I think two months was too long. I chafed so badly in March at not being able to read something else, in having to stick to this challenge. I didn't break it. I only read things that were 10 years old, but boy, did I not like having that freedom to just pick up any book I like. Because I am a mood reader who can never decide from one day to the next, even within several hours, what they want to read. And not being able to just go and get any book I want was hard. It was the hardest thing about this challenge. So I have decided that in the future, when I do this challenge again, because I will, I'm only going to do it for one month. One month was fine, but the second month was too hard and a little frustrating at times. It might also have been the books that I read. I'm not sure. And I will get into a wrap up of the books a little bit later. Now I wanted to talk about just how useful and satisfying this challenge has been. I think we all can get sucked into, it's new, it's new, it must be great. Not always. Sometimes new isn't necessarily better. And besides, these books have been languishing for such a long time on my shelves that I feel so much less guilty because I've read them, I've tried them, decided which ones I liked and which ones I didn't like, even considered whether I will keep all of them. I don't know. Though knowing me, I probably will because I find it very hard to get rid of books. Nevertheless, having read some of my older books is inspiring me to continue with this, though not as strictly as I have been doing it during the challenge. Now, as I go forward, I'm going to read, say, one new book and then an old book that has got to be at least 10 years old. The reason I have stuck to that number is that there was a stage of about 10 years where I didn't buy many books, mainly just Stephen King, I think. And so many of my books are either over 10 years old or they're only two or three years old. And I'm happy with that and I'm happy to do this. It doesn't mean I'll stick to it, of course, but I'm going to try at least for the rest of the year. I'm going to try to balance my reading by getting through some of the old books, not just the new ones. And I'll be hoping that maybe I will find a treasure because unfortunately I haven't yet. I haven't hated anything I've read, though I can't say I've fallen madly in love with anything either. Yeah, and I guess that might be why these books didn't get read earlier. But still, I feel very good about having gotten through some of these books. I'm actually still continuing to read an old book that is over 10 years old. And I'm recording this in the first week of April. But I don't feel like I have to read this book. I'm reading it because I want to, because I want to finish this series. It is the second in the, what is it, Rampart Worlds trilogy by Julian May. And I'm feeling so much freer reading this because it's through choice. And yes, it was always my choice to read only older books, but I know that if I don't want to continue this, I can put it down and read something else. I guess it's always about restrictions, right? Even self-imposed ones. Knowing now that I don't have any conditions on what I need to read, I'm enjoying the books I'm reading because I want to read them, not because 
I'm having to fulfill this challenge. Crazy, but true. Yeah. To sum up, this challenge has been very useful for me because it has given me the incentive to continue to read some of my older books. I'm hoping it might also inspire me to unhaul, but don't hold me to that because I'm very bad at unhauling. Still, Knowing I've read some books that I've had for such a long time makes me feel so much better about the books I've got. And it's not like I finished all my older books. I still have quite a few that are over 10 years old that are unread. And I'm motivated to continue reading some of these older books, at least for this year, maybe even continuously until I get through them all, if I ever get through them all. But I need to point out that being such a mood reader, I cannot commit fully to one old, one new, but I'm going to do my best. <laughs> and I guess that's all we can ask of ourselves, right? Yeah. As for the books I read in March, I read six. I read Shadow's Gate and Traitor's Gate, both by Kate Elliott. So I have now finished her Crossroads trilogy. And they were big books. Yeah, I think Shadow's Gate was around 700 and Trader's Gate was over 900 pages. So they seem to take forever to finish. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about this trilogy as I'd like to do a review on it because I don't think anyone talks about it and I think it deserves to be talked about. But what I will say is I loved the world that she has created in this series. Her world building is fantastic. It always has been. It's so rich and detailed with gods and customs and cultures and mannerisms and speech and concepts and ideas and philosophy. I just love that about this series. Though I will confess, sometimes they really did drag for me because she goes into too much minutia of irrelevant things. Nevertheless, I was very satisfied at the end of this series and I think I gave it like a six to six and a half. I'm trying to be a bit more generous with my scoring because I'm usually a very hard scorer. And she left it open-ended, so we might get a further series, which I will read because I did really enjoy this. Though sometimes I felt like it was taking forever to finish. The other things I read, I read three more of the Lemony Snicker books because I've only had seven for 10 years. I've actually now bought the whole series because would you believe it was cheaper to buy the whole lot rather than just the few that I was missing. And I only read the three because they were the only ones I've had for 10 years. I do want to finish this series now because I'm hoping there'll be a happy resolution at the end. And I think I enjoyed them more in the last few books because the author has changed it up now. And that has made them more interesting to read. Plus they're so fast and very funny at times that I found myself laughing as I went through them. I don't know when I'll finish this series, we will see, but no doubt in the near future. The ones I read were The Austere Academy, The Ursatz Elevator, wow, I can't pronounce that, and The Vile Village. The Vile Village was just, <laughs> it was quite funny actually, but that's all I can say without touching on spoilers. And the last book I read was a classic, and that is Peter Pan by J.M. Barry, I think it is. Yes, I have never read it. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your view, I watched so many films as a child and as an adult that a lot of great books that films are based on, I've seen. So I feel I know the stories. It makes me much less interested in reading a book when I know how it ends. I have, however, discovered that some books don't always match the films, and I've really enjoyed that, such as 
Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Did I say that right? Because I've been getting it wrong every time. Yes, I did get it right this time. And Frankenstein, they showed me new things about the characters which I hadn't seen in the films. I unfortunately didn't feel that way about Peter Pan. It didn't feel new to me. It felt like something I already know. It didn't mean I didn't enjoy it because I did. It is very charming, though I don't like Peter. <laughs> yeah, I think he is an arrogant and cocky and self-involved little shit. <laughs> Not necessarily a good guy. He was so selfish. But I guess that is the point of the story, that children are basically extremely self-centered. Nevertheless, I'm glad I read it, but it is definitely a book that children will love. It just wasn't one that I loved. I thought it was good, but certainly not something that I think I'll have to read again in the future. Hmm. Though I never say never. Yeah. So that is all the books I read. But now, of course, I want to hear what your experience was of this challenge. Did you find any treasures? And I really hope you did. Did you enjoy it? Or did you find yourself chafing like I did at being restricted as to what you could read? You know I would love to hear. And you can put it down in the comments or you can contact me on Instagram. Well, thank you all very much for watching and a special thank you to all of you who did undergo this challenge with me. I absolutely love that we did this together. Well, that is all I have for you guys today. And of course, as usual, if you like this video, you can like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you all have a beautiful day and I will see you next time. Bye.